Hello, Graham Roberts here. How do we use a spinner on a form? Well, a spinner is one of the controls that enables you to select a number without much room for error by the person inputting it. Another kind of um, control you could use is a slider that does something similar to that. If we look at the slider, this is the slider control and I'm going to put the spinner on, here's the spinner control and we see, let's make that a little bit larger how they work by running the program so out of the box the spinner allows us to go up or down, spin the numbers up or down through the number line negative to positive and also the slider will but the slider doesn't have a built-in to an output um, field like the text field as we've got attached to the spinner it does actually is outputting values and we can see a visual idea that say if the lowest number is on the left the highest number will be on the right and we can actually pick out numbers from here but this is what we call an analog display really this is more for the notion that you've got something that can travel from one value to another value as a continuum. In other words, you'd expect really, where a slider is used, that you'd have fractions involved. Um, the spinner is used where we don't, although we can have double values in there. Let's have a look at the spinner in this session. So I'm going to get rid of that control. And we just look at the spinner. Now the spinner has got um, properties, of course, and sorry, I just put the spinner up here. So I've just noticed you can't actually see quite what I'm doing with this box over there. And I'll look at the properties in there. And what we're looking for is the model, first of all, the model, the abstract model. And if we click on there, we get this, and we can have the default date. So we can have dates spun, a list, or we can have a number. Let's choose number. And we're going to start with an initial value. We can start with zero, or we can start with um, one, anything we like, really. What's the initial value going to be? Well, let's start off with an initial value of 10. OK, because we're going to launch a rocket. So the initial value is 10, and the minimum value is going to be 0, and the maximum value is going to be um, 10. The step value is 1 at the moment. I'm going to make it minus 1. And we'll see what that does to our model. We run this. Okay, so we get this. If we try to go f lower than 10, it doesn't let us. If we go higher, <laughs> it goes to 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. So there we have the launch sequence for a rocket. I'm just going to go back and set this to much more usual kind of spin that we do. Let's say we're going to start from 1 and go up to 100. I can actually just type in 100 here and the initial value will be 1. I'll just spin it down to 1 and the step size will be 1. So it's going to click, uh, go from 1 to 100. And when I run that, it'll be going from 1 to 100. How do we get the data out of the spinner and into this field when we click the button. Well, let's go to the click button again, handler, and we just go underneath that and what we're going to do is extract the data from the spinner. Now we know the, J, the spinner is jspinner1 because that is the default name. So we want to get what? A value. Now it turns out that the value method is what we need. We're going to set the JTEX field text to that, so we just do a little copy there. 
little paste there, open up the bracket and close the bracket around it. So we're sending that as a message to the text field. Now this complaint, what's the complaint? It, it says really again this string object clash. It's saying I'm not sure what this value is that's coming out of here. Well what we actually want is an integer, an object called an integer. So we just say here cast it to integer and see if that does it. Well it doesn't because what we actually want is text and this value is not text so instead of casting to text or to string what we can just do is say to string which we've seen before every object has a to string method so we just convert that to string so when we change this nothing is happening that's what we wanted it's like the list box if I go to let's say I go to 11 or 12 let's go to 10 rather click here and see what it comes up with 10 what if it's uh, 6 yes so it's working and if we spin up to say 99 it will show us that so that's how you can use a spinner